Hey guys, welcome back to another video. Uh, it's good to be back, it's been a while. Uh, in this video, we'll be going over creating the cool looking motion graphic using modifiers tags and a uh, geometry node editor trick. Uh, super simple, super effective and cool looking. You can do this in the latest stable release of Blender 2.92. I do hope you learned something from this video and if you do, then please leave a like, subscribe and click on the bell icon for further notifications on future videos that I make. Um, if you do decide to make this to yourself, then please share with me on Instagram. It's always great to see what you guys do. And I want to point out that the project files for this video are available on my Gumroad uh, for just two dollars. So if you want to support the channel, then uh, go ahead and look over there. Now, I guess uh, let's get started. Okay, so we have a fresh Blender scene. And for this video, we'll be using the latest version 2.92 of Blender. Uh, make sure you have that because else you don't uh, get the geometry notes. Now, as always, let's uh, hit AX and choose OK to delete everything. And very simple. First off, we are going to add in our music. So let's go open up a video editing window. And in the timeline here, we can just drag and drop our audio. I have it saved over here. Drag it in there. Boom, you're done. Now let's change the frame rate to 30, which is default. And we need to change the length of our animation to uh, be the length of our audio here. Now, uh, in my case, I know the actual length, so I'm just going to type it in at the uh, bottom there. And it's 5042 for me. Just make sure that you uh, use your audio and have the right length for that as well. Okay, so with that done, uh, if you go back into layout and you hit spacebar, you will actually hear the audio that you just added, which is nice. So let's just increase uh, the size of our timeline here so it encapsulates all our frames. And now let's add in our plane here. So shift A and choose plane. And scale this up, hit S, and I'm going to type in five in my case. Uh, you can choose whatever you want though but five will do for me. Now I want to apply the scale. So uh, hit control plus A and choose scale here. And that should be it for modeling. Super easy. Um, let's just animate it really quick. So on the first keyframe, hit I while hovering over the plane and choose rotation. Now let's go to the last keyframe, hit R, Z and type in 720, which will be two full rotations. Hit OK and hit I and choose rotation again. Now do make sure to Choose both keyframes here and go for the linear interpolation with T. And this should make a, a constant rotation of two full circles uh, during your video, making things look a bit more interesting. Now let's uh, hit Shift A again and add in a sphere here. And just move it up a bit. So with G, Z and move it up. And I'm going to rotate this as well. So first keyframe I and choose rotation. Last keyframe, let's rotate it RZ720 and hit I again and choose rotation. Also make sure to do the interpolation here as well to linear. So select the keyframes, hit T and choose linear. All right, so that's that. Now let's work on our modifier stack here. First of all, for the plane, I'm going to add in a subdivision surface. And I don't want the uh, Catmull Clark, but the simple version. So choose simple. And I'm going to crank it up to six. Make sure render and viewport are both the same. So six is good. And now let's add in one more modifier, in this case, a wave modifier. And as you can tell, this will automatically create a wave pattern, which is looking really cool already. However, it does not respond to the uh, music just yet but it's a start. Now let's add some modifiers to our sphere here. So a subdivision surface as well. I'm going to leave it at one because it already had some more uh, geometry going for it. And let's add in a displace modifier. Now click on new to add in a texture, open up the texture window there and change it to a clouds type. I'm going to change the size to a 0.2. And that's all we need to do for the uh, sphere for now. Now, uh, as you can tell, uh, it's set up, but it's not responding to our audio just yet. So let's go ahead and fix that. First of all, let's fix our wave. So click the plane and uh, you can tell you can change the height here and it will change the look of the uh, wave pattern. Now, 
I want to animate this. So uh, I'm going to the first keyframe, hover over the height for our wave here and hit I. Now at the bottom here, and let's change our timeline to the uh, graph editor, like so. And let's make sure we lock the values for our rotation. So the transform, the object transform here, click on the lock icon there, and you will make sure it doesn't change the values. Now select the height here, uh, open up the key menu and choose bake, to, uh, bake sound to F curves. Now look up your audio here, select it and change the highest frequency to 5000. This gives me a good result. It can be different for you, so play around with these values to get the result that you are looking for. And now uh, if I hit play, yeah, you can see there's a graph down below and it's actually responding to the audio. Super cool, uh, very effective and super simple as well. Now let's do the same to the displacement for our sphere. So select the sphere and here on the strength value, let's hit I again. Make sure to lock our object transformations. Select the strength value. Make sure you go back to the first keyframe. I almost forgot that. Go to open up the key menu, bake sound to F curve and hit OK. And now both our objects are responding to the audio. And it's looking very cool already. Now let's go work on the cool effect with all the dots that you saw in the video. Uh, and we'll be using the geometry node function, which is uh, kind of new, uh, at least for the uh, stable release of Blender. So with Shift A, I'm going to add in a icosphere here. In the icosphere menu, I'm going to uh, set the subdivision to one because we don't need all that data. Scale it down by uh, quite a bit and G and X and move it out of the way. Now I want to apply the scale, so hit Control A and apply scale. And let's open up a new window here. I'm going to change this window to the geometry node editor. And with the plane selected, I'm going to add in a new geometry node. And here I just want to add shift a, a point instance and put it in between these two nodes there. And for the object, choose the icosphere. Now I think the icosphere is still a bit big. So in the outline, I'm just going to select it here, uh, S to scale down and then apply this skill and you will see it changes the uh, look there. Now let's do the same for our sphere. So new geometry node there, shift A, point instance, plug it in there and choose the icosphere. Cool. You can tell it's working and it's already looking very nice. So good stuff, very simple. I'm just gonna close off this window here. Now, important note here is that you have to respect the order of the modifier. As you can tell, if I move the geometry node up once, the wave does not work anymore. And if I move it up once more, you will see it just ruins the entire thing. So do have this order, subdivision first, wave second, geometry node last. Same goes for the sphere. Subdivision first. Displace second, geometry node last. And then it should work nicely. All right, so I'm going to go into top view with numpad seven and I wanna add in a camera. So shift A and choose a camera here. Now it's facing down, so let's rotate it. So RX 90, we'll face it forward. RZ 45 to get it to the right angle that I'm looking for. And now I'm going to move it back. So G, uh, Y, and minus 10, and G, X, 10 as well. All right, that's looking good. A numpad zero to go into camera view here. Now with G and Z and the camera selected in the outline, I'm just going to move the camera up like so for now. Now I want to rotate it downwards. And if you uh, use RX, it does not work properly. So in the object properties, just change the X rotation and it should work. So I'm going to change the X rotation to 75 here and I'm going to move the camera up again. So G, Z, get everything sort of centered here. And now I'm going to change the focal length down to 30, which will make sure that the entire thing fits in our camera and just center everything like so. And I think that's all we need to do for our camera work here. Now, if we go into render view, you can tell it's looking very boring. Everything is gray. 
So let's change our world settings first and change it from gray to black. Now everything will disappear because we got no light in the scene. So select our icosphere. And this is why it's so simple. We'll just add a material here. And it will change everything that we want. So add in a new material. I'm going to call this one emission. Set the emission to white and the strength will go to something like, well, just go for two now. Okay, looking good. Gives a very cool effect, I think. Let's change some of our render properties. I'm just gonna increase the samples here. Gonna add in ambient occlusion, add in bloom. And the color management can go up to high contrast like so. Now, next up, we want to change the color of the material um, as the audio increases. So on the like bass or something like that, we want a change in color. And that's actually very simple. So let's go into shading here, close off these windows. And with the icosphere selected, so the emission material, we just need to add in a couple of things. First of all, let's add in a mix shader. So shift A and type in mix shader, plug it in there. Now we can duplicate our um, principled BSDF emission shader here, move it down and plug it into the bottom one. Now let's change this second emission shader to a bluish tint or whatever color you want. Uh, but I, I'm going for blue here. And now if I change the factor here, you can tell it's actually changing the color. So I'm just gonna make it slightly less blue, like so. I think this looks pretty good. And now if I go from zero to one, I can actually switch between the two colors. Now we just need to find a way to actually uh, use the music to uh, change this factor here. And um, it's more simple than you might think. We are just going to add in a value node here. So shift A and type in value. Set it here and plug it into the factor. And now the value slider actually controls it. So you can tell it is changing. Uh, it can change a lot actually, <laughs> but um, we're not going to use that much. So hover over the value here and hit I. Now let's open up a new window and choose the graph editor again. Select the value node there and in the menu on the left, make sure you have the value selected. Let's go to our first keyframe again. Important step to have everything matching. So first keyframe and then key makes sense to have curves. Everything is still set, so just hit okay. And now if we play this, you can tell it's not only moving, and responding to the music, but it's actually also changing in color. Super simple, super effective. Okay, so that kind of wraps up everything we need to do for the shading. Um, it's easy enough like so. And let's just do one final step, which is the uh, usual, and that's compositing. So go into compositing, hit use nodes there, and render a single frame. Make sure you got something to work with. Now let's move this node to the side and this one to the other side and shift a look up a viewer node set it there plug this in there shift right click and drag over these two to combine them v to zoom out move this to the side like so and let's add in my favorite node again the lens distortion in this case i'm going for something a bit stronger so a 0.1 lens distortion I think it looks cool. It adds to the uh, to the effect. And I want to add in jitter as well because um, I think it's got that vibe going and it looks a bit, well, um, retro. So I'm going to increase the bloom slightly because I want a bit more um, drastic light going on. So I change the intensity uh, ever so slightly. Now, back into layout and into our render properties. I've set everything to full HD. The uh, length of the animation is the length of my audio. Frame rate at 30. I'm gonna choose a save location of my choosing. Change the uh, export type to a FFmpeg video. Go into encoding and make sure it's set to MP4. And in the quality there, I want perceptually lossless, which is the best. 
Now, usually we don't use audio, but in this case, do make sure you uh, turn it on. So for the audio codec, use AAC, which is uh, very universally compatible. And that's about it. And we can actually go ahead and render this one out. Okay, so that brings us uh, towards the end result again, guys. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you learned something. Uh, and if you did, then please leave a like, subscribe, and comment down below. Uh, it's great to hear what you guys think. And uh, if you want something, do uh, leave a request. Uh, it's always good to know what you guys want to learn about. Um, I want to point out that the uh, project files for this video are available on Gumroad for just $2. So if you want to support the channel, uh, please feel free to buy those. Um, if you do decide to make this yourself, then share with me on Instagram. It's uh, always super cool to see what you guys make. Now, uh, I've got the full animation and video uh, playing for you guys. So uh, sit back, relax, and do enjoy. See you in the next one.